Hi. Let's have a look at how ship traffic and oil spills are detected and monitored with Copernicus. Ship traffic monitoring and oil spill detection are one of the oldest operational satellite services in Europe. It's a very mature service, which is mostly used by governments for the moment, although there is a push towards oil and gas companies and shipping companies. SAR, or Synthetic Aperture Radar, is a type of radar sensor that you can find aboard the Sentinel-1 satellites. The radar signals can see through clouds and don't need any natural light to function, so it's ideal to monitor the seas in darkness and in bad weather conditions. It's a radar, not an optical sensor, so it detects texture instead of colors. Ships, with all their metal and their corners, appear as bright spots on a SAR image because the radar signal bounces back on them. Oil spills on the sea make the sea surface smooth and flat so that the radar signals are bounced away from the satellite, making for a dark spot. The technology to detect oil spills and ships on a SAR image was developed in the 90s already and has been used operationally ever since, with other SAR satellites than the Sentinel ones. In Europe, the sea surface is monitored daily for oil spills through the Clean Sea Net Service, which is operated by the European Maritime Safety Agency, or EMSA. They get information on detected oil spills and combine it with other information to determine the source of the oil spill. They get this information within 30 minutes after a satellite image is taken. They also have another operational service, Safe Sea Net, which focuses on safety and security at sea and in ports and uses a combination of ship detection information. Other uses of ship detection are illegal fishing and border monitoring. How did the satellite applica application grow to become this big European service? It took 25 years of development. As I mentioned, the technology of using radar for oil spills and ships has been around for many years. And I'll show you how it got from an idea with support of ESA and the EU and turned into something international. I'll also show you the economic benefits of a specific case in the Baltic of SAR satellite imagery. Technology is great, but it's not always easy to convince a user to pay for something, no matter how great the technology is. For oil, oil spill detection, a big push towards getting users to pay was that legislation came into place that encouraged or forced governments to monitor pollution along their coastlines. At that time, you didn't have satellites, or at least none that were uh, to be used for operational monitoring, so it started out with planes and side-looking radar on ships. And with the launch of ERS-1, a SAR satellite of the European Space Agency in 1991, and RadarSat-1 a few years after that, it really became a satellite-based service. The operational service started with a satellite receiving station in Norway and delivered satellite imagery to coastal authorities in Norway and the Netherlands. This picture shows how far back the service goes. This is a figure from 1993 showing the detected oil spills from satellites off the coast of the Netherlands. Since then, the service has expanded and improved with help of European Union and nationally funded projects under the EU Framework Programme and currently under Horizon 2020 funding. Another piece of legislation pushed the operational oil spill detection to the European level. The European Maritime Safety Agency, or EMSA, was tasked to work with the member states in developing technical solutions and providing technical assistance in actions such, such as tracing discharges by satellite monitoring and surveillance. This came into place in 2005, and nowadays Clean CNET, which is the name of the Operational Oil Spill Detection Service, uses over 2,000 images a year to monitor European seas for oil spills and leaks. With SAR data, you can also monitor sea ice and see where the ice is broken up, making it easier for ships to sail through those spots in the ice. Ice monitoring with SAR data is an operational service in many of the northern countries who deal with sea ice every winter. Because SAR can look through clouds and darkness, it is especially useful for northern areas where bad weather and months of darkness make optical imagery useless during winter time. ERSC, the European Association of Remote Sensing Companies, 
looked into the economic benefits of the free, full and open Sentinel satellite data and used winter shipping in the Baltic as a case study. The information that can be extracted from SAR images on sea ice is used to find the best route through the ice, which saves the ships fuel and time, allowing them to have more reliable arrival times in ports and delivering their goods on time so that factories can operate all year round. Urs calculated that Finland and Sweden benefit between 24 and 116 million euros a year thanks to the free and open Sentinel satellite images. For those of you interested in seeing how to extract information from a SAR image, I'll explain you how to do it with the free Copernicus data and a free tool from ESA in the next few minutes. We'll perform a ship and oil spill detection from a Sentinel-1 image in the SNAP toolbox. We'll download the image from the Sentinel data hub. If you'd like to try it yourself, the links to the data hub and to download the SNAP toolbox are provided here. This is the Sentinel scientific data hub. All of the Sentinel images can be downloaded from here. Register or log in and we'll start searching for a suitable image. Zoom to your area of interest, then draw a box around that area. Click on the menu button in the upper left corner. Here you can fill out your time period of interest by selecting the start and end date. Choose the Sentinel-1 mission because that's the mission with SAR sensor on board. Choose GRD as the product type, for this application is the product type that is the easiest to work with. Click the search icon and wait for the results to load. Then pick an image that best covers the area that you want to investigate. If you want to see more information on a particular image, click the eye icon and you will see the footprint, a quick look image and the technical parameters. You also see the download button in this window. Go ahead and click download. We'll import the downloaded Sentinel-1 image into the SNAP toolbox. Click File, Import, SAR Sensors, Sentinel-1 and browse to where you've downloaded the image to. Click on the zip file and click Import Product. When it opens in Product Explorer, expand Bands and double-click the Amplitude VH image. This will open the image in the viewer. The bright areas in the image are land, and the speckled black area is the Mediterranean Sea. We'll cut out part of the image over the sea to cut down the processing time. Go to Raster, Subset, and now you can move the blue outline on the thumbnail or change the scene start X and Y coordinates to create an image of a smaller area. When you're satisfied, click OK. You can open the new image once it has loaded into the Product Explorer. Make sure to save the product so we can keep working on it. Then go to Radar, Radiometric, Calibrate. We have to convert the values of each pixel in the image into something that can be physically measured, a sigma naught value. Make sure to select the subset as input dataset and give a good name to the output dataset. In Processing Parameters, make sure to select both VH and VV and click Run. To run a ship detection, go to Radar, Feature Extraction, Ocean Tools, Ocean Object Detection. Make sure the source product is your calibrated subset of the original image. Under Land Sea Mask, select both Sigma Naught VH and Sigma Naught VV. This step will make sure that any land areas left in your image is filtered out of the results. Leave the parameters under Adaptive Thresholding and Object uh, Discrimination to the default values. And save your output with a name you'll recognize and click Run. We'll do the same for oil spill detection. The workflow within SNAP is mostly the same. You'll also find the oil spill detection tools under Radar, Feature Extraction, Ocean Tools, Oil Spill Detection. Make sure the source product is the, your calibrated subset of the original image. Under Land C Mask, select both Sigma Naught VH and Sigma Naught VV. 
Again, this is to make sure that any land areas are left out of your final results. Leave the parameters under oil spill detection and oil spill clustering as the default values. Save your output with a name you'll recognize and click Run. When the oil spill detection or ship detection is ready, you can see it in, displayed in the SNAP toolbox. But to make a better visualization, we'll switch to QGIS, a free and open source GIS software. First, open Excel and import the XML file of the ship detection or oil, oil spill detection. Save it in CSV format. Open that CSV file within QGIS with the CSV import tool. Set the coordinate reference system as WGS84 and click OK twice. Add a map to the background so you can see where you're located. Then you can change the style of your detective ships to a red dot to create a good contrast. Now go ahead and try it yourself. Thank you for watching this video.